Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 4th of May. Indians in capital New Delhi queue for vaccinations as COVID-19 cases should pass 20 million. US will not disengage from Afghanistan, says Secretary of State Blinken amid troop withdrawal. And Nepal appeals for COVID-19 vaccines as cases rise. And now for all the details. India on Tuesday reported over 357,000 new COVID-19 cases, taking the overall case count past the 20 million mark. This comes as Indian government has expanded its vaccination drive by allowing all its adults to take the jab as soon as possible, which was only for about 45 earlier. Meanwhile, the country halted its most popular sports tournament, Indian Premier League, after drawing criticism over the risk involved amid the pandemic. India on Tuesday recorded 357,229 new infections over the last 24 hours, taking the total tally to 20.28 million. However, National Capital New Delhi, which has been struggling with providing enough beds and medical oxygen for its patients, recorded a mild decline in new cases. Delhi has turned its schools into vaccination centers before opening a massive drive to vaccinate all adults. Huge queues are still seen at vaccination centers. Meanwhile, amid the rising infection cases across the country, cricket officials suspended the money spinning and its most popular tournament, the Indian Premier League or IPL. IPL in a statement said, These are difficult times, especially in India, and while we have tried to bring in some positivity and cheer, it is imperative that the tournament is now suspended and everyone goes back to their families and loved ones in these trying times. With opposition parties calling for national lockdown, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is reluctant to impose it for fear of the economic fallout, but several states have imposed social curbs. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar met U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in London on Monday in their first in-person meeting ever since President Joe Biden's administration took charge in January this year. They discuss ways to deal with the rampaging COVID-19 pandemic, situation in the strategic Indo-Pacific region and cooperation in multilateral forums. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and U.S. Secretary of State Antonio Blinken in their first in-person meeting discussed ways to deal with the rampaging COVID-19 pandemic, situation in the strategic Indo-Pacific region and cooperation in multilateral forums. Jay Shankar, who is in the UK for a four-day visit, held talks with Blinken on the sidelines of the G7 Foreign Minister's meeting on Monday. India's foreign minister expressed his appreciation for the strong support of the United States as India fights the world's biggest COVID-19 surge. Blinken said India and the US were together in the fight against COVID-19. International aid has poured into India in response to the crisis as the country's health system struggles to cope under the weight of new COVID-19 cases, with hospitals running out of beds and oxygen. So far, U.S. has sent five consignments of assistance to India to deal with the ongoing devastating COVID crisis. The assistance includes oxygen concentrators and other related supplies. On Tuesday, a U.S. Air Force aircraft carrying 545 oxygen concentrators arrived in New Delhi. Both the ministers also discussed the agenda before United Nations Security Council, climate change, the situation in Myanmar. In news from Pakistan, 
The Pakistan People's Party chief Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has said that there would be no benefit of electoral reforms and use of technology if the role of the powerful establishment continued to exist in the polling system, as it would make every election controversial. This comes as Prime Minister Imran Khan had recently invited the opposition directly to sit together with the government and discuss the use of electronic voting machines to reclaim the credibility of the elections in the country. The Pakistan People's Party or PPP chief Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has said that there would be no benefit of electoral reforms and use of technology if the role of the powerful establishment continued to exist in the polling system as it would make every election controversial. The opposition PPP came up with this thought on a fresh direct offer from Prime Minister Imran Khan to opposition to discuss electoral reforms ruling out any possibility of the required results from such an exercise if the establishment did not agree to keep itself at distance from elections in Pakistan. At the same time, the PPP also sounded cautious over the offer from the PM accusing him of being part of rigging in the 2018 general elections. Uh, obviously, legislation ka to zarurat hai. Transitional reform ki bhi zarurat hai. Lekin jo sabse ahem, sabse important aspect hai uh, ke elections mein dhanli rokne ke liye ek aspect to legislation zarur hai. Lekin jo fundamental aspect hai wo establishment ka uh, role jo intakhabat mein hote hai. Or agar establishment ka active role hai intakhabat ke uh, silsile mein to phir jitna bhi kanun saazi hum kare intakhabat Prime Minister Imran Khan had recently invited the opposition directly to sit together with the government and discuss the use of electronic voting machines to reclaim the credibility of elections, but the opposition parties took no time in rejecting the offer, saying the idea was not viable for the country. The opposition took it as a new plot to rig elections. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. As the United States have begun its withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan based on President Joe Biden's decision to be completed by September 11, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has assured that Washington will not disengage from Afghanistan despite troops' withdrawal. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday assured that the United States will not disengage from Afghanistan despite withdrawing its troops from the country. Blinken at a press conference in London with British Foreign Secretary Dominic Rupp said that the U.S. is trying to advance negotiations in a political settlement between the Afghan government and the Taliban. We've made absolutely clear that as we uh, withdraw uh, forces from Afghanistan, uh, we will protect them, and if they are attacked, uh, we will take decisive action uh, in response. Uh, but we've also been clear that even as our forces are, are uh, uh, drawing down and, and pulling out of Afghanistan, we are not uh, withdrawing, we are not uh, disengaging. U.S. President Joe Biden had last month announced that the remaining 2,500 U.S. troops in Afghanistan will leave by September 11. Other NATO allies confirmed that they would follow suit, including the UK, which is to begin withdrawing its remaining 750 military trainers this month. Violence against Afghans has escalated in recent weeks, with more than 100 Afghan security forces personnel killed. Gasoline tanker trucks burned into flames in Kabul overnight, killing at least seven people, injuring more than a dozen and causing power cuts to parts of the Afghan capital, officials said on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Pentagon on Monday said small harassing attacks in Afghanistan over the weekend had not had a significant impact on the United States' military withdrawal from the country. In news from Nepal, Nepal urgently needs at least 1.6 million AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine doses to administer second shots as the Himalayan country is recording a surge in new coronavirus cases. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Monday urged foreign donors to supply vaccines and critical care medicines to prevent a collapse of the small country's cracky health infrastructure. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli in an address to the nation on Monday said the second wave of COVID-19 has severely hit the country with an increased number of infected people and mortality rate and urge international organizations to help the nation 
with vaccines and other relief supplies to combat the pandemic. The new wave of coronavirus infections, which has spilled across Indian border into Nepal, has seen a shortage of hospital beds and medical supplies across the Himalayan nation. Oli said the government has decided to suspend domestic air services from the midnight of 3 till 14 May, while international air services operating between Kathmandu and other countries will shut down from 6 to 14 May as the country tightened the prohibitory orders amid spike in the coronavirus cases. Kathmandu on last Thursday enforced a 15-day lockdown hoping to curb infections. Since we are living in an interconnected and interlinked world, pandemic like this spares no one and no one is safe. It is in this vein I would like to request our neighbours, friendly countries, and international organizations to help us with vaccines, diagnostic equipment and kits, oxygen therapy, critical care medicines and critical care furniture to support our ongoing efforts to combat the pandemic. Meanwhile, residents in Nepal's capital of Kathmandu have been forced to cremate bodies of COVID-19 victims out in the open on Monday as cremation space at temples and crematoriums ran out amid raging coronavirus cases. On Monday, the country's health ministry reported 7,137 new infections. The country has recorded a total number of 343,418 cases and 3,362 deaths, as per Health Ministry data. In news from Bangladesh, at least 26 people were killed when a speedboat packed with passengers collided with a vessel transporting sand in the latest maritime disaster to hit Bangladesh on Monday. At least 26 people died and several were missing after an overcrowded speedboat collided with a sand-laden bulk carrier and sank on Bangladesh's giant Padma River on Monday, police said. The accident occurred in Madaripur district. Five people were rescued and sent to hospital, a local official said. <laughs> Hundreds of people die each year in ferry accidents in Bangladesh, a low-lying country that has extensive inland waterways and lacks safety standards. Amid an unprecedented surge in India's COVID-19 cases, some individuals across the country have either formed groups or taken it upon themselves to help out those in need for oxygen, mask or simply awareness about the ongoing pandemic. Have a look. A man dressed up as a clown disinfected a Mumbai slum in western Maharashtra state recently as India continues to witness surge in coronavirus cases. Ashok Kurmi was seen disinfecting various homes in the neighborhood and handing out masks to children. Working with a pharmaceutical company, Kurmi has made it his goal to educate both adults and children on how to stop the spread of virus. Joker is known for to happiness, but समय ऐसा है कि Joker भी लोगों के बीच में जाके बोल रहा है कि समय happiness का नहीं है, सुरक्षा रखें और सुरक्षित रहें. Meanwhile, amid shortage of beds and oxygen cylinders in the country, a group of Sikh volunteers in Ghaziabad, a town on the outskirts of Indian capital New Delhi, is providing oxygen to patients lying on benches inside makeshift tents hooked up to a giant cylinder. Hospitals have filled to capacity, supply of medical oxygen has run short and mosques and crematoriums have been swapped as India grapples with the surge in coronavirus cases. Patients are dying on hospital beds, in ambulances and in car parks outside. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.